Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to discuss very important concept and this is also very much asked in a data engineering interview. So let's suppose you have mentioned a Scala in your resume. So as we know that Scala is a hybrid programming language. What does hybrid programming language means? So uh, there is two paradigms uh, of programming. One is called object oriented programming and one is called functional programming. These are the two paradigms that we that is there in the programming world. So and the Scala is a language which supports both that is object oriented programming and the functional uh, programming aspect of it. So uh, I have seen many uh, good interviewer asking these questions to someone who have mentioned Scala in their resume. Now let us try to understand what does this functional programming means. So, so how you can define a functional programming? So according to me a functional programming will consist of two things. The, what, what will be the first things? The, it will, the functional programming will have, uh, so let us start by writing it out and we will be also implementing some code to understand. So what is functional programming? Functional programming will support two things. The first thing will be it, it will support pure functions. We will talk what the, these pure functions mean and it will support immutability. Immutable variables. We will be talking about these two things. Okay. So let us try to understand what does this pure functions means? See functional programming it is not like that there is a special program, uh, programming language which is very much functional in nature. It is a paradigm right. So and it is very much well suited when you are working with data. So uh, let us suppose while you are working with data if we try to follow the functional programming or the functional aspect of any programming language it becomes little easier for us. So let us try to understand what does this pure functions means. So pure functions what does pure fun what is a pure functions ok let us try to analyze it what is a pure function cool. See any function will be called pure functions if it supports three properties what is the uh, what are the uh, three pro what are the three properties so let's try to understand the first thing is that output of uh, i've already written let me not write it uh, we can discuss it from here itself let me just do control x and put it here okay see the first property of the pure function is output of the function will slowly slowly depend on its input. What does this mean? That you uh, think about any mathematical uh, function a square root, abs functions. So the output of a square root will only depend upon its input right. It does not depend upon some, some value which is defined outside. But let us take some example. Let us uh, let suppose you are you have written some uh, written some uh, example like a uh, get uh, get today's weather or today's temperature and in that functions you pass the date right the date as a input parameter so the today's uh, predicted day, uh, weather will not depend upon the only input it it also depend upon the function which is defined outside right let's suppose you are you have written some functions like convert to dollar and you are passing Indian uh, passing one currency as an input. So converting to dollar will not depend upon only uh, the input passed right. There are multiple other variables which will be defined outside the function and that will def uh, determine the value of uh, um, value of um, uh, dollars right. So uh, let us suppose if your function is only dependent upon your input the output of the function then it will be treated as a pure function that is the first characteristics. 
the second characteristic is that the function will not override the value of input path. So, while we are doing the object oriented programming, we have this tendency, right? We write one function and inside that function we pass one uh, parameter and uh, inside that function itself, let us suppose we have passed x. So, we will be writing x is equal to x plus 3. So, if we do like that, if we change the value passed in, pass in inside the functions, then it will not be treated as a pure function. We will be writing the examples, do not worry. And there will not be any side effects. So, what does this side effect means? See, if your, your tendency of writing your function should not change. Take the example of any mathematical function, like a square root. Whenever the square root is called, right? It does not do anything other than finding the square root of a particular number, right? Uh, let us suppose there is one ABS function, absolute function. So, the work of that mathematical function is just to find out the absolute. It is not do any anything uh, extra than that. But let us suppose you are writing some functions and inside that uh, the work of function is to, uh, get, to do something. And inside that function you are writing multiple print statements. That is also the one of the side effects or you are doing something weird you while uh, so let's suppose you you, are, you have written one function convert to dollar and inside that you are passing something uh, you have pa you have passed some input parameter and convert to dollar you are calling some api or something right so that will be a side effect so your functions should only be intended to uh, to do the expected thing it should not do something extra so if it is doing something extra then it that will be uh, treated as a side effects so, let us try to code it down and let us try to understand about this pure functions, okay. So, let so let us see this function. So, this is that I have defined one square functions, right. So, here the output, the output of this particular uh, functions is only depend upon the input, right. We have not uh, used any other variables than this uh, the input passed, right. The first is passed. Function will not override the value of input it, uh, input passed. So we are we have passed this value. We are not doing something like this, right? Value is equal to value plus three. We are not doing like this, right? We are not changing the value of input pass. So the second condition is also passed. And what is the uh, intention of this function? The intention of this function is to find the square root. It is only doing these things. If I will write something like this, so this will be treated as a side effect. So the print ln is the side effect, but it it is not that uh, bad side effect. But let's suppose inside these functions, what I am doing, I am calling some API. So, I will call, I am calling some API or calling some another function or doing something else. So, why I have written this function? I have written this function to find the square uh, of particular number. But inside that function, if I am doing something wrong, some something extra, that will be counted as a side effect. So, we should always try to build our pure functions. And if you are working with uh, any data engineering in uh, expect of a uh, um, uh, pure code base, and if you try to write your pure functions, you will find that it is very easy to debug, okay. And let us suppose uh, you have defined one function. Let me just uh, define one uh, list, okay. Numbers is equal to sequence 1, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, 5. And if I am calling some function numbers dot for each, okay. For each, for each functions, what does for each will do? It can iterate uh, through any sequence, right? So, and if I am doing something like this, okay, and then I will be writing some function here. So, what do you think? Does this for each is a pure function or impure functions? It is actually impure functions. Why? Because the input uh, the output value is unit. So, we are not returning some output. So, this is the impure functions, right. So, so you see, so here the in we are passing some uh, uh, input, right. 
and what is the things that output of function will only depend upon its input the function will not override the value of input path and there will not be any side effects but this functional programming uh, in this uh, whenever we are calling this for each this is actually a impure functions okay so i hope you go, uh, you got it let's suppose i have defined one of uh, functions def convert to dollar and i am passing some currency value okay so what do you think uh, just one minute okay so what do you think is this a pure function or impure function here we have to we have there will be multiple other parameter which we have to uh, define outside right on those parameters we will be getting the last result right so this is also impure functions so i hope you are able to get what does this uh, pure function and impure functions means so any functional programming will always support a pure functions what the second condition is the second condition is immutable variables what does this means so let's suppose uh, there are two type of things there are two types of variable in scala one is called immutable variable which is defined by well okay if we try to change the value here we will not able to change it see our editor is saying it is wrong but if we change it to vary uh, uh, to to mutable variables then we will be able to uh, able to um, change the particular value so and the fun what functional programming say it will support immutable variables so always try to write your code using val okay and that and you will find that if you are i am writing my code using val it is it becomes very much easy for me to uh, write a good uh, code and and it's very easy to write the code uh, while only using valves so there are multiple things like tail recursive recursions and using higher order functions and you uh, using this type of things you will uh, see that it is easier to write the code when you are uh, writing the immutable variables so uh, today we have discussed one good uh, uh, what you call it, the good paradigm of the uh, writing programs and it is very much asked in a data engineering inter interview what is functional programming and i hope you will able to uh, able to explain this particular uh, particular um, concept and i will be also adding this code uh, to my github repo and i hope you are able to learn if there is any doubt feel free to write, uh, write in the comment sections and we will try to discuss it again uh, okay le uh, let's try to meet in the next video and we will be trying to discuss more advanced scala topics and we will try to solve some good uh, scala topics which is oftenly asked in a uh, sorry which is mostly asked in a data engineering interview okay uh, that's for today thank you thank you and please subscribe my channel